Thank you, team, for introducing me. Hello, everyone. Let's talk about Data Mesh. Many of you have probably heard about Data Mesh. Some of you are likely implementing it in your organization. But you might be wondering, are we there yet? Have we cracked the code of Data Mesh? Have we changed organizational structure? Have we built technologies based on this paradigm? I will be answering some of these questions with this talk, and I will give you some next steps toward what North Stop for Data Mesh looks like. But first, why should we talk about Data Mesh? Why do we need yet another paradigm in managing data for analytics and ML? Because now we are at an inflection point. The paradigms and approaches that we've had in accessing, sharing, and managing big data has reached an inflection point, has reached a plateau in responding to the organizational complexity. The accelerations that organizations have experienced toward digital solutions, changing the way we live, work, and play with digital solutions have increased the complexity of organizations. One way of measuring complexity is what I've put in on the x-axis of this diagram. It's the number of sources touch points, applications that are generating data is a number of ways that we want to get value from that data, applied ML in every application that we use. However, how we imagined and implemented data management at scale for analytics and ML have plateaued in three metrics that I describe as business impact, have plateaued in the ratio of value to cost, are we getting value from the investments we're making in data and analytics proportionally? In agility, in response to the growth of organizations, as the organizations grow, as the number of sources and touch points grow, as the number of ways we can use data grow, are we responding to organizational growth with agility? And finally, are we resilient to change. Change is constant in data, in its schema, in how we use it. Are we maintaining resiliency in response to that change? What well, Data Mesh assumes these increased complexity as a default state of being and introduces a new approach for managing big data so that we can reach, and reach new heights. What I showed with you in terms of plateauing in response to past paradigms is based on my own experience and what you see as um, surveys and market research. A market, particular market research that I go back to every year is a, net, net, a new vantage partners report. When what I show on this diagram is the ubiquitous and universal nature of investments that our companies are making. 99% of organizations today are spending in data, and the amount of investments is growing, with more than 62% investing more than 50 million. However, the result that are, we are getting are limited. What we're seeing is that 24% of companies are using data in production in a widespread manner. And only less than half of these companies are competing using data. And why is that? Why we're seeing these sort of challenges? The last few decades, we have spent our energy and time on addressing some really hard problems. But these hard problems were machine problems. We're optimizing our ability to process data in an optimized way for the machines. What do I mean by that? Well, we found ourselves post-internet era with large amount of data. So we had to invent quite a new models of data storage with distributed file systems and data processing at scale that we saw with generations of data management with Hadoop in early 2000s. The variety of data that we were working with required new ways of storing data, and we found ourselves with object stores, document stores, time series stores, and diverse modes of storing and access data. The number of touch points and digital devices and mobile devices and sensors led to requir requiring a streaming infrastructure and backbone for processing data real time. But none of these approaches had the scope of focusing on complexity of the human systems and optimizing for organizational complexity. And that's where Data Mesh focuses on. 
The current paradigms, in short, have three fundamental um, limitations in managing data at scale in complex organizations. The first one is this assumption around centralizations that on the left-hand side of the diagram, we show data can come from many sources, many applications and domain, and it can be used in many domains and applications in the business, but we have assumed that we need to have a centralized data team, data organization in the middle, and centralized technologies to, to address this, um, this situation. And as you can see, this can become a bottleneck, an organizational bottleneck and a technology bottleneck. The second challenge with the current approach is this pipeline thinking that we have built organizationally and technology solutions that flow data from applications into processing, cleansing, um, loading data into storage. And that's not finished. The pipeline continues. Then we layer that with semantic and knowledge graphs so that we can make sense of that data at scale. And then we have to layer it with governance and access control. Not finished yet. Yet another stage of the pipeline. Now we extract features and put them in feature store and so on and so on. Until on the right-hand side at some point pops out value in applied ML embedded in applications or reports and insights and analysis for people to actually make decisions about the business. So this pipeline model is full of points of friction and fragility because value is orthogonal to these steps, and they're actually stretching this lead time to go from data to value. And despite the fact that I draw this beautifully designed and, or simplified um, clean diagram, the reality of existing data architecture is something like this 1600th century Flemish um, painting of Tower of Babel. If you have heard of the story, is a symbol of human condition ambitions and foolishness. So what we had was in, the, in this uh, story is that people decided to build this tall tower, the city that's gonna reach the heavens. But the problem was they didn't speak the same language. So, so they built something that wasn't connecting nicely with each other. As you can see in this diagram, the, the architecture is barely holding itself together because those inter points of interoperability and interconnectivity just didn't exist. And that's the story of our existing data paradigm or data management paradigm. We see lack of incentives and lack of standards for around getting data collaboration across platforms, across teams, across technology. And what we end up with is an architecture of a confused language, confused tongues with the Tower of Babel. So how DataMesh solves this or addresses these root problems? It, to start with, it embraces complexity. It embraces um, the fact that organizations are constantly changing. The data is constantly changing. It, it unlocks the organizational ability to get value from data at scale by fundamentally assuming a decentralized architecture and a decentralized data ownership. So it assumes that teams are organized cross-functionally around a mission, around a business outcome, around a business domain. And these teams are working collaboratively to not only build application, these digital solutions to empower that business, to get to that business outcome, but also they're gathering, collecting, sharing, and working with data to apply analytics and ML right then and there to the business domain and share that across within the domain and across the domain. So this idea of decentralized ownership of the data by cross-functional domain, uh, domain teams is key to data mesh. There's no longer a separation of an app team and a data team, an online world and an offline world. And to do reduce that lead time to value from data to applied data in the um, analytics with analytics and AI. It can, introduces this concept of a computational data product, a architecture, an architecture unit that encapsulates all of the structural elements needed for data to be used as a value. And that includes the data, the pipeline, the computation, the policies, 
the metadata, the understanding, everything around it. And that's what we call data product. That's the unit of exchange. And to remove those points of friction around data sharing introduces data contracts and data APIs designed specifically for analytical use cases. And I think these are areas that still re it requires quite a bit of an innovation. When we think about data APIs today, we often think about you know, files or or streams and, and modes of sharing the data, but we need to start thinking about in higher order value as expressing what we want from the data with, with, with computational language and get that data back. Fundamentally, data mesh is based on four principles, domain ownership of the data, data as a product, and self-serve data infrastructure to make this even feasible, to give a power to autonomous teams to share their analytical data and use analytics in an embedded fashion, and a federated computational governance to allow to define policies that govern the data then and there with the data, with the data product, and apply it at the right moment of read or write or access or discovery, and heavily rely on automation for that. Since the inception of Data Mesh, it has captured the hearts and minds of the, our industry. And I want to share some, um, perhaps some numbers and some um, examples with you. There are a large number of organizations that have embraced the concept. Um, I've put a few logos as examples here. And these organizations are um, across industries. They're in public center, in private sector, different sizes in the finance, healthcare, um, AT um, entertainment, and telecom, and so on. And the interest in, if you look at the Google Trends, the interest in the concept has grown substantially since its first public birth in uh, 2019. The community has grown, and I hope you are part of that community, or some of you will join if you're not. Um, we have um, Slack, the community of data mesh learning on Slack, meetups, uh, podcasts. That is, uh, every time I go to the Slack to update this slide, the number is growing. And most importantly, the vendors and people that are building the products and technologies are leaning in. And we see the cloud providers try to remove some of the constraints to allow data sharing across different accounts, at least on the cloud. Um, they're creating some visibility around the domains. We see the virtualizations and federated query engines leaning in and try to enhance their products with, um, uh, with additional information uh, beyond just um, querying. Storage and processing streaming uh, platforms leaning in to allow access to the data across the nodes and data catalogs, of course, adopting some of the languages around a data mesh. We still yet to see a pivot and technology built natively ground up, but that I think will come with time. So uh, a lot of movement has happened, a lot of interest. Are we there yet? Well, what is there? I define data mesh as a decentralized socio-technical approach uh, for accessing, managing, sharing data in a complex and large skill environment within organizations and um, across organizations. So there's two parts to this um, North Star. There is the socio approach, part of this approach, the organizational structures, team, and behavior, and the technical part. So are we there on the organizational side? Unfortunately, not. Uh, most of my um, I guess based on my purview and working with a lot of um, organizations, what I see is some anti-patterns, which um, shows that data mesh is growing, but it's starting from the data organization. And it becomes limited and constrained to the data organization. So we're not still bridging the gap between the online and digital worlds and application worlds and the data world. But maybe that's just natural step of the uh, stage of maturity and progress. So we need to work toward bringing data and app and apps and app and services together. And and unfortunately, many of the data mesh initiatives start from the data platform teams, the data infrastructure teams, and they're doing fascinating work. But there would be a limit to their progress. They're going to hit a really big, heavy wall to get across to the to the to the application teams. And I will share some steps that you can take to bridge that gap. One is creating 
data mesh aligned incentives. One of the roles that data mesh introduces is this idea of a data product owner, someone with a team within a domain that is responsible for creating and managing a life cycle of this data as a product and delight the users of that data product. So introducing those roles in your cross-functional domain teams can be a great starting point. But not only that, aligning the incentives of these folks with the product nature of the data. So changing incentives from how many data products we have, how much each data product ser serves, to how well the data is serving the use cases, how happy are the data users. The other um, step that we can take, this idea of an inverse Conway's maneuver. If you have heard of Conway's law, it states that the systems, broadly speaking, that we build mimic the organizational and communication structure. So if we have a monolithic organization, we end up with a monolithic data system or data application. So what if we start changing the organizational structure to isomorphically mimic the architecture underneath. So what if we start bringing data folks and augmenting them within our domain teams while we're changing the architecture underneath that? And finally, we're making sure that we're creating those intrinsic human motivations in the teams to actually care about data, right? And that's about bringing the application of the data to domain teams, embedding data science and data analysts within the domain teams. And I know that we require a level of maturity of technology to allow that, to allow moving toward generalization of these technologies so um, the, the human, this specialization be doesn't become a bottleneck for us or access to specialized resources. And I think technology is moving toward that with data science in the box and moving toward more engineering and development aspects. How about the tec technical part of this socio-technical shift? Have we created technologies that creates this autonomous peer-to-peer -peer data sharing and connecting consumers and producers directly? We're trying, but I see some anti-patterns developing. And that's just a natural state of where we are in technology. And I want to share some of the anti-patterns that I see in the wild. The first one is that you still have to be on a single cloud provider to be able to share data in this data mesh uh, mode. As long as your organization is happy to be on one cloud, then um, your data mesh works. But as soon as you step outside of that particular provider, data sharing becomes a challenge. A subset of that paradigm uh, or pattern is when you have to be on a single platform. As long as you take your data and ship it to a particular technology, you can build nice data products on top or nice looking data products on top, but at the end of the day, you're limited to that platform. And these are actual real points of friction for the innovator adopters or early adopters of data mesh. I see in a lot of organizations that they have gone full in building data mesh on a particular technology or on a particular cloud. They've shown progress, they've shown value, they created excitement. The rest of the organization wants to join in and they say, hold on, but we're not using that technology. We're not on that platform. We have data in a hybrid environment or across three different clouds that we have adopted over the last decades or so, what shall we do? So extending this usage of data analytics from one cloud is, is something we need to work on. And the last anti-pattern is the one that, um, I guess it pains me most because we're not really solving um, the bottlenecks, which is we, we still keep the data teams and um, you know, the, the app team separate, data still flows, it's a pipeline model. So data still flows from the applications to some storage, lake, warehouse, or a variety of different types. And then downstream, we try to create data mesh. So these models, um, they're not really addressing the, the, the bottleneck. So what, why, what, why we're not there yet? So what is, what is lacking in the technology? Some of the gaps that I see that I invite everyone to innovate in this space is around this idea of um, you know, developer experience and technology that connects users, data users, and data uh, producers directly, and really think about data product as a fundamental first-class concept. 
The second part is the data APIs. You know, designing data APIs that allow distributed analytics, distributed and federated machine learning model training without requiring to constantly move data from one technology to another technology for different modes of access. And I've put some attributes, what I think should be, that should be included in the data sharing APIs. We still feel there is a high cost of integration of technologies that have been built for that centralized pipeline model into this network and graph and mesh topology at, at, um, at a macro scale. And of course, there are some hard limitations. Many of the vendors didn't assume that you will have thousands of data lakes, right? The thousands of data products, essentially. So the, the, there are some limitations around security, but that there are being addressed. So what is, what is the North Star we want to get to? In reality, I think North Star is still a place of our imagination. And I love this quote by Carl Sagan. Imagination will often carry us to worlds that never were, but without it, we don't go anywhere. We go nowhere. So I want to give you, just tickle your imagination with this fictional um, company that is that has got to that North Star of data mesh. What we see here in this diagram is a set of cross-functional teams that come together around the business mission for their domains. We see a digital streaming, let's say a digital media streaming company. They have a team around um, engaging with the listeners. They have a team around uh, creating playlists that are bringing that immersive experience. They have a team around partnership, making sure they get music to, um, to their listeners, no matter where they are, on the bike, in a yoga studio, or maybe somewhere else. And if you think about each of these teams, they are sharing data and using analytical data. So the playlists are using sophisticated machine learning models to customize playlists personalized for users but maybe they need data for personalizing users where they are doing different activities, whether it's they're focusing on a work or they're on a bike or you know, they're doing some exercise. So they need get data from that partnership team to know that what users like or dislike, what they listen to when they're do doing exercise, when they're immersed in a partnership platform. But the partnership team, naturally is incentivized to provide that data or go the extra mile, create the APIs to share that, gather and share that API because their mission is an immersive experience with the partner platform. And we're having, we're seeing this direct peer-to-peer -peer analytical data sharing between partnership and playlist and the rest of the organization. What you don't see on this diagram is any technology, the, plat the big platform they're using because if we are aiming to empower people, and developers, we've got to take the take the, the technology needs to take a backstage, um, needs to go need to become almost invisible to what we do. So in short, you might think that wow, the the mission is quite audacious, the North Star is far. We still have challenges. We see anti patterns, um, and and this might appear quite challenging. But again, in the words of John Adams, every problem is an opportunity in disguise. And I think we are in a rare moment in time. We have this big vision to get to. We definitely have a need. The industry has spoken that we do have a need for change. And clearly there is white space for innovation. So let's get back to work and create some magic. And if you want to join me in creating the, the a data mesh native developer experience, uh, reach out to me. Thank you.